What's up, y'all? I just wanted to make a quick video talking about this Max API Control MIDI CC device. While it doesn't roll off the tongue, I think it's pretty rad, especially for us sensory percussion users. If you've been messing with the integration of sensory percussion with Ableton, I'm sure you're very familiar at this point with the virtual MIDI port. And the general workflow, if you want to use a controller to control something in Ableton, you would just uh, you know, assign a controller to a CC output, and then we're just going to drag it over and assign it to something uh, in the same way you would map a MIDI controller, where you go into MIDI mapping, select the parameter you want, wiggle the knob, boom, there it is. And that's it's fine. We're probably going to still keep doing that in some situations, but thanks to the Sunhouse forum, I became aware, uh, aware of this device, and so I've been using it more, and I just wanted to quickly show you how it works, and you can decide what workflow works best for you. The key thing is that you want to put this track on the MIDI channel that your MIDI is coming from. So in this case, I have a MIDI track that's taking input from the sensory percussion plugin. All you have to do is turn input on and then select the CC number that we're using. So the controller I had set up was for CC1, so that's already on one. And then all that's left to do is to map it to something. You can drill down to the track and the device and the parameter, uh, but that's kind of a lot of work. Thankfully, we have uh, mapping option where while it's not super obvious all you have to do is click map and then select the parameter you want to control and all of our uh, choose your windows are populated correctly and I'm just playing this uh, wavetable preset that I made um, but we're now controlling the dry wet mix of the reverb using velocity sweet. Pretty much the only downside I can see to this device, I don't love how these minimum and maximum values are just percentages. Um, and in some cases, that doesn't really translate very well. Like for instance, if I wanted to map this instead to control a pitch, MIDI pitch object, obviously I'm going to want to restrict the range, but you know, what is I guess like 45 and 55? I don't know. Uh, yeah, see that's like minus 10. How was I supposed to know that? Just a, just one little gripe, really not a big deal. Maybe the coolest thing to me, aside from the workflow of this device, is the way we can um, shape the CC response that we're passing through. And that's what these knobs are up here. Uh, it's might be helpful to actually look at the MIDI velocity effect to get a sense of what these knobs do, at least the curve and the, the comp. If you look at the comp, you can see that if you bring it down, it's basically going to make it more likely that you hit the middle of the range. And then if you take it up, it's more likely that you'll kind of skip over it and you'll either have really low or really high values use that to taste most likely. Uh, the curve is going to be what this drive knob looks like on the velocity controller. Uh, if I bring it down, it becomes more exponential. And then if I take it up, it becomes logarithmic-ish. Or using these together is really quite powerful. Uh, yeah, so that, just these small adjustments would look something like this. And that's a really specific response, and I find that to be really helpful, and I plan on using this quite a lot. Jitter is probably self-explanatory, but it basically just adds a little bit of noise to the signal. I guess the main other thing to realize about this device is that you can map it to a parameter on a different track, which it might be more apparent if you use these drill-down menus. Um, but we can just do that by using the map parameter and I'm just going to go to my sensory percussion plugin track and select the send which is going to send this into some echo. Uh, so if I go to a kit and sensory percussion with a sample on it, uh, now we're using the control MIDI CC object to use velocity on our echo send for the sensory percussion plugin.
So in this case, I might want to bring this down since I was having a hard time getting it completely dry. Nice. Like I said, a lot of these parameters are available to us in sensory percussion on the controller settings and stuff. But if you're already, if you're even interested in using this device, chances are you're using a lot of controllers on stuff within Ableton anyway. So it's pretty nice to have it on the Ableton side to minimize switching back and forth between plugins. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this helpful. Maybe this workflow is going to work really well for you or open up some possibilities. See you later.